Uh, you know, he, he's pretty expensive, you know, per hour. How much you charge uh, per hour, man? It's a lot. I don't know if you can afford it, but... Uh, we can, can try, we can try. We can negotiate then. Yeah, you can pay me year after year yeah, 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 yeah. for your whole life. We will, we will tell this to no, no. our director because it was his task for us to make this film. So we said, oh, we said, we're done with that, but here's this. Yeah, here's this bill, you know. Here's the bill. And it is, it is. Sorry. And it's signed by Osa, I'm sorry, man. It just says that it's like. But uh, this, the thing is uh, done and good, good one, really good. We can be professional. <laughs> <laughs> really professional videos. Yeah. Yeah. HD quality. <laughs> so I said okay. sorry. Just, uh, the microphone then. Ah, we just continue yeah. about the sun. Yes. So there is, you know, historically Buddhism exists in Russia for you know uh, several hundred years. In uh, yeah. Yes. So it's so, you know, but. Um, uh, during the like Soviet times, uh, it was as other religions banned, and actually uh, those people who were practicing Buddhism were, you know, have to hid do it hiddenly. So uh, with the traditions, you know, uh, even even the historical, you know, traditions were kind of degraded, and also, you know, we have like security services which, uh, you know, KGB maybe have heard. Yeah. And uh, they using, you know, they used religion uh, in, in a way to control as well the society. So we have several churches open, but... Uh, run by the KGB. Yeah, it's kind of, you know, not run by the KGB, but... It was, in, you know, controlled. So, uh, you know, people do kind of preserve, you know, Christianity or could preserve Buddhism, but it was like really hard task, you know. Really, yeah, uh, because, you know, difficult. And uh, I know that. Do you know what's like the, the, the population of Buddhism? Like Buddhists in Russia, um, the number. Who's doing the interview? With? <laughs> no, I, I know. know. <laughs> this is just the, this is just to like heat up. Just want some information now before we go. Uh, I I don't know exactly. I think that uh, Kalmyk is uh, below one, totally below one million. I think at least uh, about one million oh, yeah, in Kalmyk. Cool. Uh, Buryatia is supposedly uh, and even more. Yakutia, I think it is about five, four, or five or six million totally, or maybe up to ten. So I never, you know, try to to calculate because I. But it's a lot. It's a, it's a lot. No, but it's, it's lot several lot. millions. That's wow. good. That's really good. So yeah. Russia has a lot of potential to help people to grow. Like that. But, but you know, in this region, it was like more traditions, more rituals, so not not so many teaching. <laughs> and then, yeah, it kind of puts you off, right? So you don't want to come. Yeah, yeah then when teachers uh, come to us, they see, oh, so many young faces. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> and we're an FPMT one. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. yes. That's amazing. They yeah, most of the FPMT center has many young people. Yes, all the young. Really? Most, well, that's most. really good, actually, because it's not very usual for FPMT. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, yes. Right, right. Normally it's like. No, I mean, in, in St. Petersburg, we have a generally similar situation. So. We used to have uh, people in St. Petersburg, they have a like, group who was, uh, you know, <coughs> run by uh, real, you know, scientists who just, they're just studying Buddhism as a, uh, you know, not only by practicing it, but yeah, also yeah. like as a research, scientist, like a research. Like a research. And uh, uh, there they kind of have a, like more, uh, you know, uh, less diverse, you know, range of ages, so like, more old, you know, older people coming, but generally, uh, but generally in Moscow we experience that uh, we had some success, you know, uh, some uh, more people uh, start to come uh, when we uh, understood that we need to uh, give something interesting for young generation. Because uh, otherwise, we have a lots of different uh, Buddhist, you know, centers like uh, Karmakagyu, 
Ningma uh, one Geluk, Geluk Center, which they uh, present in a very classical way, with all these rituals, and people who have this wish to uh, go some to some to some ritual part or some you know they just want to have some miracles or kind of like this thing. They really kind of old, bit older, and those people who uh, want to solve their problems uh, right now, they are usually young people. I see. And they That's usually really good. It's really really good. And uh, this is our question is connected with this generally. So, uh, <laughs> I think uh, I couldn't, you know, exactly put it right. But uh, what is your vision of uh, how, you know, and why Buddhism is interesting? <laughs> For a uh, young generation, for particularly like from 15 to 23, 25, 30, how it is interesting, why it shall be interesting, and what are the ways to, you know, most effectively introduce Buddhism to this kind of audience? So this is a question? Yeah. Yeah. But, but, right. but to be more traditional, because uh, this video could be a part of this video, mm -hmm. we should start with uh, uh, several words about you, what is your way to and now we're here, something like introduction part, and after that, next question. <laughs> okay, so you start with your introduction. Uh, introduction, so what kind of introduction do you want again? You're saying, how do I practice my Buddhism? Yes, sir. Uh, who are you? First of all, who are you? Uh, who am I? What's the well, big deal? Uh, my name is, uh, what people call me, Guntu. Uh, when we don't know, start with you. I don't know what you said. What would you use in the video? Why? Are we using that footage? It's, it's, it's working already. Okay. It's filming. <laughs> oh, good. Well, um, my name is Guntu, and uh, I was born in Canada. I was born in Canada, in Montreal. I was recognized as the 23rd Gumutu, and I was like around three years old. So I was like around three years old. And uh, I, when I was six years old, I moved to Italy. I came here to study. Italian, a little Italian. Uh, we talked about this. Maybe I came here to reconnect with my family. Eli, 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 but the rest for 12 years I was basically in India studying. You know, and when I was 20, I left the monastery to, uh, to, uh, to do the thing that I really wanted to do most, which was music at that time. And, and it's still now, I love, I love doing music. You know, so I, 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 I got a contract with this record label. I, they, 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 they wanted to sponsor my album, so we did it. It took me two years, maybe, but uh, I was able to do it. I made three videos, and uh, my my I've been on different news agents. It's kind of weird because coming from a monastery and being able to do all that, and, and, and landing on some big television, like an Italian television called Cambretti. I was on that show, million people watching. I was also um, invited on radio stations, and you know, it was pretty cool. It was, it was like really being in the music scene, like from MTV or something like that. Uh, it was cool. Also, I, I was connected with Universal, Universal Music in, in Milano, and um, that's that's why really, that's why I moved to Milan for two years because I was making music there. Yeah. I had my connections, all the hip hop. The Italian music world is basically Milan. Every, everything you want to hear me in Italy, the music are all in Milan. So all the production companies, the labels, all in Milan. Even though Italy is not like the top country for music. You know, it's Italy. Maybe for oh. opera, but, but it was my connection. You know, that's, that's the connection that I had, so I utilized it. And yeah, it was good. I, it was great. I'm happy with that. And, uh, and, uh, and I still, and I, people might think, oh, maybe the little is not any more Buddhist because look, there's so many girls in his videos, or look, he has champagne in his hand. 
So that's contradictory to a Lama. Actually, it's contradictory to a monk. And if it's contradictory to a monk, it doesn't mean it's contradictory to a Buddhist. Because a Buddhist and a monk, is, they're different. A monk is more detailed. The Buddhist is like, you know, you can all be Buddhist, you don't have to be a monk to be a Buddhist, right? So, and obviously for a Lama, you don't have all these rules. Lama is basically the meaning of a tupu. Uh, not the literal meaning, but the meaning that we know is, is the reincarnation of, of a great Lama. So if you're a reincarnation of a great Lama, you automatically become a tupu. That's it. You don't, you don't get any rules or laws on you. That's all you get. You just two. But that's only the name you get. Just get the title. Then when you get ordained, that's when you get laws and rules. So you know, we don't give that back. I don't have, I don't have my vows. I give back my vows. I'm allowed to do as any you know, like you, you know, Corona or whatever. Go to the club, play some Russian music, drink that vodka. You know, we're good, man. We're good, man. We take some shots. So. But I mean, I'm, I, I consider myself a hardcore Buddhist, really. In a hardcore sense, I'm not like um, a super patriotic type of kind of guy, you know, when I get in, that's when you someone talks bad about it. But um, deep down myself, I'm very Buddhist. Like the way I think, the way I try to relate to things, I'm, I'm very, I'm very how I studied the text. The kind of information that I got from the text is kind of like how I am right now. Not maybe everything, but a lot of it have you know, been implemented in my sort of way of doing things. And so yeah, I consider myself a pretty hardcore Buddhist. And I'm like, you know, like any kid, like any, any of us, you know, so you know, we can all be cool and, you know, better and getting you know, better and uh, yeah, live a happy life. Good life. That's more important because they're happy. I don't like the word happy. Yeah. People, it's not a, Buddhism is not about being happy. Buddhism is all about being content. It's a big difference between happy. Because happy involves excitement. And excitement, we don't, we don't really dig that. We don't like excitement. Excitement is not a good thing. It's okay, but it's not. It's like yeah. content, being content. Like, not unhappy. Not unhappy. Not unhappy. But it's happy too, but it's not like that. Happy here to start dancing or something. Not that happy. It's happy here. It's just you feel good inside. Like now, right? It's like confident, chill, relaxed. What is all this we're saying? I think basically what you're saying is being content. So no need for vodka. Why not? <laughs> I'm not doing this for my Buddha, I'm doing that for children, at night, children, something else, you know. Contentment is something else. Then I, I'm, I'm, I'm content going drinking too. Content drinking water, content drinking. I, I think as long as there's moderation, then it's okay, you know what I mean? Anything, even water without moderation can kill you. So, you know, it's the balance, the middle way, you know. It's not an extreme of oh no 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 or yes yes yes. So this is nice. You know, chill. You don't have to be paranoid about whether you're doing something bad or whether you you have to do only good. You know, it's more about living who you are and how you feel. You, what 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 you feel? You know, at that moment. And of course, the main for me at least the main factor that that brings happiness or not unhappiness or contentment is when you think about other people before you think about yourself. That for me is the essence of Buddhism. It's that simple. There's nothing more complicated than that. Instead of putting yourself first, you put everybody else first. And then automatically you will be super happy. Everybody will take care of you. You don't have to take care of yourself like that. You know? But of course, if you don't love yourself, then you cannot help other people. So the first step is to, to love yourself, to know yourself, to be comfortable with yourself. Once you do that, then can open and then everything will come back. It's a lot of the universe. Yeah, it's about like accepting yourself, right? Exactly. Like, being who you are. A lot of times we not not what you want to be or what you should what people think you should be. Right. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah. This is incre in incredibly important for, I think, young generation especially. Yeah. You must, you know, uh... <laughs> what? Because what? She's like, no, <laughs> man. <laughs> Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Too. Like, I exist, man. No, I just want to say, I just want to I don't that. exist on my own side, but I still exist. Thank you, man. No, I just want to share that uh, my my you know young age and and just until maybe uh, maybe even now 
I still feel that I'm not really, you know, not really self-confident. And I think for young people, you know, up till yes. like 30, But it's a normal situation. How old are you? I'm 34. 34? Well, you look like 24 actually. <laughs> Look at him. How old am I? Can eat and tan at the same time. Maybe 30 something. Oh, shit. <laughs> What? Oh, thank you. I'm 29. Middle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, accepting yourself, having that confidence in, 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 in our generation has become very. Yeah, it's become uh, complicated because. Before was life was a bit simpler, right? It was more about like living a having a family, raising a family. Like there wasn't too much of of, of different of, of different like, groups, styles. Don't don't get me wrong. What I meant by that was people need to advice. If my mom didn't advise me in my life, I would make so many many mistakes. Thanks to my mom's advices, I remembered. So when I face those things, I know how to challenge, I know how to face it. But I'm not getting involved in myself in those situations because my mom told me to. I involved myself because I wanted to. But because my mom told me about things in general in life, how things can happen, I'm aware now. You know? so that thing is important. Some parents don't care, they don't care about kids, just let them grow and you know, should say so. Yeah, it's balance, find the balance. Not one extreme, not the other extreme. And in Buddhism, it's the same. You know, so you have to find the middle way in everything. Because there's a, the, the fanatic religious Buddhists, and there's the other Buddhists who, who are the, on the other extreme. You know, like I don't know. I don't know who is, yeah. But I think the important part is to be able to, 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 to find your own way. Because it's not like somebody come and say, okay, you know, this is the truth. This is for you. You know, you have to find your own way. You know, and. And it's, nobody can come and give it to you. It's impossible. You have to walk your own path. Nobody can walk your path for you. Do you understand that? So it's very relevant, you know. Yeah. You mean, it means that uh, well, the best uh, way to treat the children is very similar uh, as the best way to, you know, teach, uh, you know, people who want to follow in Buddhist path in particular. Well, I mean, I think it's up to each individual to, to choose how they want to practice whatever they want to practice, yes? Um, but in relation to Buddhism, I think people shouldn't take so seriously every single word that's written in books. Because they're going give you a headache. You know, you just have to take it lightly. What works for you, you take. What doesn't work for you, what doesn't... Just wait on it. Yeah, you just wait. You know, just take your time. Because some people just get so frustrated, they want to understand And sometimes you cannot understand. It's something so difficult to understand. It's impossible for our heads to logically put it in a box like we humans like to do. We like to put everything in boxes so that we understand. We control, 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 so that we don't. We're not scared of losing control. But that's not the point. The point is to to to, to learn. Always learn. You, even the day you die, you're still learning. So there's nobody who can say, oh, I know everything, or I know enough that I know. That, 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 that can be debated. Well, I mean, of course. Because usually well, when we die, we forget everything, and we go to part of the stairs. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm, but I'm saying, like, even when you're dying, you're still learning the process of dying. Yeah, but then when you get reborn, you forget about that. Yeah, of course, you forget about that, but that moment, you're still learning. Even the day that you're dying, you're still learning. So what I, what I'm, my point is that every second of your life, you're learning, and you should never think, oh, I, I know this, or this is like that. Because nothing is, like, solid. Everything's changing constantly. If you think about it, like, energetically... Don't, don't break it. <laughs> Everything's vibrating, you know? everything's moving. So much energy, man. Yeah, like, everything is interdependent. Yeah. Nothing is dependent by itself. So, but then, of course, if you try to understand it intellectually, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of effort. Maybe after 10 years, you still don't understand. But you can experience it. Maybe in a moment of taking acid. And like, oh, anyway, wow. let's go on to the next question. It's already quite. It's like maybe, maybe you should delete that last part. <laughs> No, but what I, what, let me just finish what I was big. touching. Is that drugs can help you to understand things, but that's not the way. You know, that's what, like everything is, you have to have some moderation. So it can help you to see 
something else, something more. But it doesn't mean that that's the way it should go, you know, that's just to give you some insight of how big or how expanded our, our minds are un inside universes, in interior universe. Okay. There's about 30 minutes left on, <laughs> on, on this card here, so... Right. How's the sound? Is it ticking nice? <laughs> Is it jumping good? Speak. Hello, hello. Yeah, How are you? Okay. Love you. But there's lots of surround. Oh, yeah. 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 Alright, any more questions? Um, Maybe the small part introductory because... Uh, oh, it's true, I just went on. Yeah. Oh, me? Your part, your part. Yeah, but everybody knows me. I don't have to introduce myself. <laughs> No, okay, so my, <laughs> my name is Osel Hita. Um, I'm the fifth kid of nine children. My parents were Lama Yeshe's disciples. And when Lama Yeshe passed away and they looked for his reincarnation, turns out that that was me, supposedly. So his holiness said that, so I believe his holiness fully. And there's many stories that kind of express that. Um, so anyway, so yeah, I, I grew up in the monastery basically, and then when I was 18, I left the monastery. And I passed about 10 years, I've been studying some cinema, I've been studying some cooking, I've been living my life basically, and trying to understand my Are reality. You been what? Been About 12 years. You too? Yeah, 12? you too, 12? 12, same time. <laughs> yeah, but that's, that's mainly what like I'm trying to do, is trying to understand, find myself, understand why, who am I, what am I doing here and also one of the things I'm trying to do is to find ways to create interest for people who have no interest in like Buddhism or spirituality how can we create a, a sense of identification or you know, interest in those people who will never have an opportunity to come in touch with the Dharma you know, and I, I don't know, some, maybe one of the ways is through cinema, movies, or music, like he's making music, um, art, photography, performance, theater, you know, just down-to-earth conversations, I don't know, just there's many different ways. Of course, we'll always get lost, but become, getting lost is very good, because that means you're hungry and you're foolish, and that's very important. Because that's how you learn. The moment you're not hungry or you think you're not foolish, then you, you can't learn anymore. And then if you think you... Some people are like this. They're like, oh, I'm lost. Oh, well, oh my God, it's a dilemma. But it's like, wow, this is great. If you're lost. That's awesome, you know, that's perfect. Because that means you're finding yourself still. It's a process, you know. It, it doesn't mean you're like, already, okay, I know who I am. This is me, and my house, my job, my, you know, that's, okay, that's the perception of a lifestyle we can have, but life is much more than that. So it's good to also break some of these, these barriers that society creates in order for us to be like, like sheep, you know, like horses, you know, the horses that put this, all you can see is the one in front, so that sometimes you have to take that off and break a little bit of these, you know, kind of concepts. By the way, so, uh, what's the, what's the advice for people who are interested in Buddhism, very young, and maybe that for them, uh, old tradition are not very uh, convenient? Yes, I agree. Um, what, like, what, what do you mean? What, what advice <laughs> for them? So, so I agree. That <laughs> should they stay in Buddhism or start to find something else? Or? Well, I think they should live their life and always be open. You know, and, and be ready for change. So, two sides, you know. You know, and, and, and you know, just two teams. Just be hungry to learn and, and be open to travel and to, to meet new people and to there's just so many ways. It's like Rome, you know, like there's all the roads lead to Rome they say, you know, like doesn't necessarily mean that all roads lead to enlightenment. But there's many different ways you can get to the same place. Or at least the beginning of the path to enlightenment, you know, at least. And I think the first step is to help other people. To think about other people like you would think about yourself. 
Oh, I'm thirsty. Oh, who who is thirsty? Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? Or I want to go party. Do you want to go party? Do you want to go party? Like that, you know, like what what I would like before I, I offer to other people. Like that, you know. And starting from there, small, small. You start small. You can't just go big, like you said. You don't go from one second to another. Slowly, slowly. So you work with your family first. Your family. Then you expand your friends. Then you can keep expanding. Even if you're just helping 20, 30 people, that's enough. You don't have to help the whole planet. You know, all sentient beings, that's just metaphorical. I used to get so frustrated with that word, all sentient beings. I said, what do you mean, all sentient beings? <laughs> Where? So it's like, all sentient beings is like, right now maybe just the four of us, and then we can expand, you know, like whatever circumstances bring. You know, and then also life will bring tests. There's many tests in life. So like in the moments where you're so angry or you're very stressed, life will bring you a test. And there, if you can really bring out your heart, your good qualities, and just give love and not react, when you pass the test. And like that, slowly, 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 you can improve as a person. For me, that's Dharma. And I'm not a Buddhist. I don't see myself as a Buddhist. He's a hardcore Buddhist. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm a learning Buddhist. <laughs> I'm learning about Buddhism. Even the day I die, I will still be learning about Buddhism. So I will never become Buddhist. But I'm very interested in Buddhism. I'm in the process of becoming, or maybe of learning Buddhism. For me, at least, this is how it is. This is how I, I see it. Well, I don't really have much say in that right now, because it's up to the people who are running the FPMT. But I have many ideas. Yeah. But now it's, I think it's maybe not the right moment yet. You know, because it's not. But my, yeah, my, many of my ideas like to to, to to create new branches in, within the FPMT so we can reach more people. Some of the branches would be like the entertainment business. Entertainment is big. People want to be entertained. People suffer when they are not entertained. Do you understand? It's like true. you get bored. You get bored. You get tired. It's like you get agitated if you're not entertained. You know, it's like. Okay, I don't have anybody to talk to. I don't have any anything to watch. And <gasps> anxiousness, anxiousness. You know, so so entertainment. If we can reach people through entertainment and give them like at least plant a seed of good in them, then they can transform that and, and actually reach a certain point where they can be happy or not unhappy. You know, and I think that's first step. You have to think first step, not the number ten step. It's the first step. Number 10 step is far away. You know, if you think about number 10 step, you're never going to take the first step. Because it's going to be too far, too hard. It's like, oh, for me, if I only have to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger, oh, wow. <laughs> now I'm so skinny. How, where, how, it's just so far away, you know, I can't. But if I say, okay, I want to be like Bruce Lee, then maybe I can work to that. You know, like, okay, I do make some, some exercise. And once I'm like Bruce Lee, then maybe I can slowly, slowly. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah, it's easy to understand, right? Yeah. <laughs> so very bright pictures. Bright. Bright pictures. Bright pictures. And what do you think about uh, PMT roll? PMT? Ah, no comments. <laughs> no comments. <laughs> <laughs> you can even write that. Yeah. You can just say that question and I said no comment. <laughs> do that. No, uh, that will be... Please do that. Maybe, yeah. maybe I can introduce one thing. Uh, one thing. One thing. I see it. It's always flirty. In, in Livorno. Sì, è vero, è venuto qui. È vero, è vero. Dici qui, no, non è qui, però è qui. Sì, sì, penso di sì, era, era un tipo in una bar. Era tipo qualcosa, era per me. Ecco di sì. Inglese? Italiano? 
Bali? See? She, she remembers me dancing. Oh, nice. <laughs> He's a star, man. He's a star. 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 Some, you know, something, uh, you know, in the world. Uh, at the same time, you know, in the same manner, which is, you know, pretty powerful. I mean. Yeah. And, no. You know, uh, this kind of, uh, you know, like you have like different, uh, you know, branches and everything, you know, and all the, all of a sudden, everybody, you know, around the world start to do one, you know, one interesting thing. So, what kind of things can be uh, for? All of a sudden, you know, start to think, start to do, and then yeah. it may change yeah. the picture. Okay, first of all, I think tradition is very, very, very important. Okay, because that's the base. You don't want to get any confusion. It's very easy to get confusion, you know, like misinformation. So, so the fact that FPMT has a very good traditional base is very important. <coughs> but too much conservativeness is not good. Because then you can't reach everybody. You only reach a very minimal amount of people. And those people will be like people who have the karma to have that interest of picking up a Dharma book or going to a meditation course or to teach us. So how to reach these other people? That's the question. Yes? So if FTMT it has its tradition, that's very good. But then the, if it can branch out a little bit more, different areas, then that can really be very good. So, so I think tradition, it's, the base is there. But right now, I think they're scared to expand more, like to be more open. They're, it's just a very conservative mentality. So it's up to us to do that. But our time has not come yet. We're still living our life. So, <laughs> shanti shanti. <laughs> Okay, so I think <laughs> from my side, uh, no more questions. Uh, no more questions? No, I know I have a lot of when, questions, when, but when, no. When, <laughs> when, which is funny. When, when do you come to Moscow? Yes. When do Tomorrow. You Tomorrow. Uh, we you invite us? Yeah, we invite After both the of you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, if you invite us to the clubs, party, Moscow, we can arrange something the first interesting. Thing I want, as soon as I land, Best vodka you got lined up. Okay, everything for you. Oh, okay. I, oh awesome, man. <laughs> I can, oh, no, no. Okay, okay. I can you, very you, nice, you, very you nice. Like, uh, for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Very nice. 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 Very no, I'm not. But you used to drink. I, I used to. Ah. I used to, but I've decided to. How old are you now? 34? 34. Yes. When did you start? Uh, in 2008, 2008, I think. In 2008. Oh, I came good. to I came to uh, Copan and uh, yeah? Lama Lundrup uh, told me that uh, I, I've kind of wanted to you know renew my recept, precepts and he said okay you need to you know give up alcohol. Well, because you're Russian, he knew. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and. I said, oh, really? You know what? what but but uh, all my all my all my work was uh, you know connected with this because I was like salesperson, and uh, you know in Russia you usually you do sales, you know you know big deals, but with this you know not unofficial. Uh, unofficial you talk and you drink. To, and talk and and drink. You, once they're drunk, you convince. They sign. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Kind of. Come on, you're kind of easier to sign. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. This is the, but this is good like, strategy. Eh? This is a tra this is a traditional <laughs> way. You know you can't really agree. Uh, uh, no, no, no vodka. If no vodka, you, you can agree. Because if you drink vodka, then with somebody, and you kind of become a little bit drunk, then you the, they, they start to trust you. You know, mm. you kind of trust the feeling of you know because you don't if you have if you're not really uh, clear, your okay. mind is not clear clear, mm. then you uh, they can che check you. You know, like ask some questions, and uh, you you know you. you for you, it will be much harder to, and to you know, without yes, yeah, to get around. You know, the Romans used to call wine; they used to call it vino veritas. Ah. It means yeah. the wine of truth. 
<laughs> means when you start drinking, you start telling the truth a lot. Yes. You know? <laughs> So in Russia it's very popular, yeah. but and I was oh, you know, how I can manage? But then I've you know have to stop, and I've stopped, and then I was pretty you know pretty pretty happy about it because it affects my health, and I oh, yeah, uh, and I also have like not very good uh, how to say story family story about you know alcohol alcohol, yeah. so we have like generations of alcoholics in our family. And so Russian is for Russia it's it's, it's normal it's, it's normal it's normal situation, uh, and then uh, I find out that it is possible even to speak with people uh, even though they're not really trust you in the first time, but then if you behave like them, if you you know. Like drinking, and yeah, yeah, yeah drinking, the but then you, you behave like sense of identification. Yes. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I'll come. Yeah, definitely. Me too. Definitely. But maybe not too cold time. Because uh, for me, I, I grew up in hot weather, so for me, cold is very hard. Very hard I, for me to cook. For him, more easy. He from Montreal. You know? Yeah, I, I can stay a little bit. Not too cold. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think anyone likes too hot and too cold. Though. Yes, but I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah middle pad. Exactly, you're learning fast. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We, we will try to organize something interesting for you. Exactly. Uh, we will try to organize something interesting for you. Okay. Awesome. But don't tell Amazopa. <laughs> you have to go to the club. No, we 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 cut we, we cut this video, you know, in parts. Yeah, you know? Okay. We have to like. Like what, ten parts maybe? <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> they're listening. Well, what, what? <laughs> what, what? What's in the drink? What did they put in the drink? <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And we will. We will. Uh, I think we'll, when we will. We will. Going back. We will going back to uh, Russia. Russia on Tuesday. No. Tuesday. On Thursday. 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 We will go to uh, uh, Krakow for this Pepin tea meeting. Oh, you're going to be in the CBNT? Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> wow, are you the director? No, we are both SPC. We d divided our SPC to... SPC, Sama? Expression coordinator. Ooh, wow. And you together? Yeah. Nice. It's, it's not easy to work as a couple sometimes, you know. No, we're not, we're not like, couple. Like couple, we are like... Working together. Oh, right, yeah, okay. But still, I mean, it's, uh, I, I think it's a great, great opportunity for both of you know, to, to go and learn about the FPMT. CPMT is going to be intense, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, are you going to go? Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Are you going to go to CPMT? Are you going to go to the meeting? No, I don't have to be invited. Over 45 minutes. Uh, we should manage the parts, some cards. <laughs> That's true. And, and we will check how, how long the video we can. <laughs> you can. <laughs> no, I mean from 25 yeah. minutes. Usually, it's like five minutes uh, of. Uh, really, only five minutes you're gonna use. But no, yeah, no. It's, it's I, even shorter. It's possible. Yeah, I can, I can, you have to be fast. Otherwise, people's attention will. I have an idea that we could make another video, not for traditional Fabianti Russia, but for young people because oh. we already have this idea to make it like for a group or to discuss something and to have some videos. That's a really very good idea. So it's very, good idea. very nice. So, so to see, like, you want it to transfer it onto your computer yes. now, yes? Yeah? Absolutely. So you want to bring it with you. But also, it's important. For people who are too traditional, if they, if they sometimes they don't agree. Yes. For me, I don't care. I don't think he cares either because what we are here to break projections, to break people's concepts. You know, that's our job. But for some people, it can disturb them. So I don't know. You know, it's it's up to you to to, to be able to know up to where to. to yeah, yes, we should be a little bit yeah. wiser to make some, exactly. uh, some differentiation. Yes. Some people can inspire, some people can disturb very much. And so it depends. We have yeah. now a normal time. Okay. You want to carry on? Or no, 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 no